What's up guys? So, um, I just got back from Disney World um, in Florida for the holidays and um, I don't think I can express everything that occurred just because I probably won't remember it all and it's okay. I'm, I'm just going to give the general gist of it. Um, there's a lot to be said. So, first off, um, and I'm going to explain this in another video. Um, I found this 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 new thing where like you can save so much time by multitasking so what I did was um, I was multitasking and I was smart so I got a lot of audiobooks a lot of them on just like how to be rich and stuff like this and a lot of you guys are like you probably have the mentality that it's they're all gimmicks all oh, none of these books actually work um, and I, I'll explain this in another video but I found this through, I can't remember exactly, but I think I searched on YouTube, how to be a millionaire, and I found a lot of audiobooks. And so, um, a lot of these are actually fairly legit. Um, they won't tell you like, okay, you gotta do this, 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 and then you'll be a millionaire, but it's a lot of good mindsets and behaviors and certain thinking concepts and ideas. And so, I packed it in these audiobooks, listened to this on my iPod back when I was um, doing all this in um, Orlando and it was just great multitasking because you gotta wait in line for like 30 45 minutes at a time to ride something even with a fast pass it can be like 10 15 minutes so it was great multitasking I learned a lot while just doing what everyone else did like a lot of other people they were spending their same time just standing there waiting for hours at a time for rides. Me, I was doing that, but at the same time, I was learning quite tremendously. And I, I feel like I, I, I learned like, I crammed like a week's worth of knowledge into my head um, of, of books at a tremendous rate because with audio books, like you're gonna have to go even if um, you, you wanna read slower and so, Occasionally, I had to rewind and re-listen to it, but on the overall side of it, I learned quite a lot, and it was astounding because 99% of the people there, they're just standing there waiting in line. Occasionally, they check their phones, but quite honestly, I did a lot through that. Anyhow, so I'm I'm in Orlando, right? Um, there's a lot of things I like about Disney World. The, the first thing, um, I went there for a week. Um, First thing, we were going along there, we were driving there, so it took a long time. Actually, uh, we actually went to a Waffle House, which was really cool. And in it, um, it was in Georgia. We stopped by Georgia, and it was the first time I went to a Waffle House. A lot of my family went to a Waffle House, and they had like this um, peach waffle, and that's what it was called. Turned out, I think it was just a syrup that was peach. No, 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 it was the syrup, the syrup was peach, but also the, um, the inside of the waffle, uh, they had like, a, inside the waffle, they had a mixture of like peaches and this sort of cream inside the actual solidified waffle. It was crazy. And you know, I, I have a picture of it later. Um, after this whole dialogue I set up, I'm going to just air all the uh, pictures. And then after the pictures, um, all the videos I took like hundreds of videos of a lot of stuff I did and then anything that's really long any of the videos that are really long I'm going to upload separately so you guys can watch those and so um, yeah I have a picture of the the peach waffle for you guys which was really cool um, it was like a Georgia special anyhow we we got to Disney World and um, I guess the biggest thing is that um, a lot of the things there were like overpriced as expected I'd been there before and I was astounded by the amount of people buying it like a lot of stuff like once you get into the the theme parks as mo most of you probably know everything there is usually owned by the theme park and severely overpriced and there are people willing to pay for it and I think I took some pictures of it 
Um, I took a picture of the pricing of a few things that we bought there. But we bought a lot of stuff severely overpriced. Like um, hot dogs, they're like six bucks there. Like uh, one small hot dog was like six bucks there. And we bought them. And there was, I wouldn't say long lines, but there were consistent lines of people who were buying this stuff. And it was just an outrage and amazing at the same time. Um, I remember as a child, uh, back when things were tougher, um, we I went here and back then we lived very much sparingly and I couldn't say it was completely anyone's fault um, because the theme park is sort of geared purposely to market and target children in order to sort of convince them to buy this stuff uh, through their parents and I remember just being very going to like zoos and theme parks and stuff and circuses and <clears throat> my parents weren't prepared for this onslaught of uh, commercialization so I was there I remember as a child and I was whining and complaining uh, just naturally that's how I was when I was little and I I didn't know what was going on but I see all these kids with all this merchandise and so forth and we couldn't buy it because it was very expensive and nowadays you know money's loosened up for my family so we're, we're buying stuff like this and a lot of people are still but um looking back it's just outrageous like um back in the day like i remember it, it took a, a heck of a lot for to convince my parents just to buy like one thing one severely priced overpriced like a bag of popcorn and it took them uh, like a lot to do that and even if they when they did it was almost like oh my goodness i just cut off my leg because money was hard to come by back then and then now um especially with my uh, little sisters it's different because um money's loosened up and well a lot of things are like like a lot of things bought this week were very overpriced like uh there's this one i took a few pictures of ice cream they had ice cream there for like that I, i'm pretty sure would have sold um in certain parts of maryland for like a dollar um they had like mickey mouse shaped chocolate um ice cream and it's crazy because i'm i'm really i'm pretty sure this was the ice the specific ice cream that back when I came years ago, um, I wanted, but it was just too pricey for my parents. Now, like our whole, we it was severely overpriced. It was like three, four bucks, but there was, I, I wouldn't say a long line, but it was always a consistent line of people outside all these venues, waiting to buy, which got me interested in Disney as a company and. I just felt it was quite an enterprise, um, but quite honestly, it's it's huge. Like the whole theme park, you have like you have to pay like the um, the actors. Like you will be surprised how many employees work for the theme parks. Like um, there's constantly mini shows going on. There's cleaning crew. There's um, people. There's like constant parades with tons of people. Million tons of shows with. All these employees needed to like uh, run the shows like I'm guessing like each theme park alone probably like maybe even tens of thousands of people necessary to run everything maybe not that much maybe just a thousand or so but a lot of people and um, I, I was more surprised that there's so many people willing to pay for such overpriced stuff I mean certain venues it was empty like there wasn't a line at all but still there's a strong amount of people at times willing to pay other times no one lined up but it was very interesting and I'm like Disney is making are they making a killing off of this because I'm just very surprised those are good profit margins especially when we just went to Costco and if you know anything about Costco um, you can get like a hot dog there that's twice as long for like under a dollar 
and we actually did do that before going into Disney World and then it's like the same thing half as long for like seven bucks it's crazy anyhow um more on a good note um we went on a lot of rides as you may or may not know i may have mentioned this but um roller coasters is a huge fear for me and i'm actually have a video which i think i'll put at the end of this video and i'll upload separately but um i i managed to convince myself to go on a few of the roller coasters the smaller ones and you guys don't understand like this is a f this is like a real phobia um I don't know where it comes from, but I, I think it's just natural. Um, I, I don't, uh, I mean, I know it's safe, but um, ever since childhood, like I've constantly, for whatever reason, field trips or other, been p pushed towards theme parks. And it's, it was always such a huge phobia for me. Like I remember going on certain, being forced on certain roller coasters, small ones. And it was almost like me crying for death. It was like, I was like begging and bribing them to get to be let off because I really felt like it was it wasn't safe or for whatever reason I felt like I would fall off and that horrible feeling like I'm mainly scared of the dips that's that's the biggest thing the, like, like the falls and I've never done a loop-de-loop -loop before but um those things like scare me crazily so this was one of the the sort of phobias I wanted to at least conquer somewhat um, I didn't end up going on the big roller coasters um, because those are just outrageous. Um, my my siblings did though, and um, you'll see in the video. But um, uh, it it's definitely not as bad as I was when a child, um, and I think I've conquered it somewhat. I don't think I'll ever conquer it completely. Maybe I will, but um, it, it's just one of those things that I I always felt like the the bar wasn't enough because uh really if you really wanted to you can slip out of there like i i literally tried it while i was on the roller coaster before it went up the the big slope you can literally slip out of that hole if you wanted to like that that iron bar that comes down if you really wanted to you can slip out of that bar on your own and if you do that on the top of the roller coaster like you're you can die um, so I that's why I was always very I had this huge phobia and that sort of came back when I was on um, the first water roller coaster you could say it was it was more of like a ride that had a huge huge fall um, right when it started right before it started going up that huge ramp for the fall um, I was I was so scared like a lot of it came back it was like um, I wanted to scream, um, I wanted to like, try and get out of the thing, which I probably could have, and jumped onto the side, I could have like begged some, like all this, these behaviors started coming back, and I was like, no, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be okay, and I did it, and um, it was very tough for me, um, and the bigger ones, I'm, I'm still fairly scared of, but I'm, I'm very proud of myself, and hopefully... Uh, I won't have to do any of that again for a while, um, but a lot of people really like it, and so you you see a video where um, I think it was the second one I wrote, uh, where I was told by my siblings that after they wrote it that it wasn't that scary, there wasn't really that many big falls, there wasn't any big falls actually. So I wrote it and I recorded it as well, um, and that one was okay because I really wasn't that scared. Um, and but you still see like partially how scared I can get uh, when I was recording myself. I knew it wasn't huge, but it was still like pretty much a roller coaster. Um, anyhow, there's a lot of other small things, but um, basically, I took a lot of pictures, a lot of videos. A lot of it was somewhat kiddish and boring, um, but um, a lot of stuff happened that made me just really be thankful for things that's that's the biggest thing on this trip um a lot of selfish stuff came about like why am i here this is all boring stuff this is kiddish um i'd rather be at home but then i realized this is kind of cool you know um i got this isn't something everyone can do 
and there was a small ordeal that happened that I knew would happen. I knew any extended time with my family would result in fights as they had always done. Um, every trip to Disney World, uh, ever since I was a little child, uh, resulted in big fights um, for whatever reason. A lot of it just me being like arrogant, but a lot of times because my, my parents are somewhat childish themselves. And I remember this happening when I was a little kid, like fifth grade or so. And my parents saying, you know what, I, I'm just so sick of this. You're just going to stay in the hotel today and watch TV. And I did. And there was a lot of like just anger and so forth. And this sort of erupted again, surprisingly. And I was just very angry because I knew it was going to happen. Um, and it resulted in a lot of stuff because now I'm, I'm an old sort of dude. Um, I'm 21. And... Um, it got heated and uh, it put me into a lot of thought. Like I was actually considering like a lot of things. Like um, just, I was like, I'm 21 now. Um, I can I can get a job here and just leave them. Um, and I'll have to interact with them again. And a lot of thinking and so forth uh, and realizing that I, I didn't finish my college degree yet. And just realizing that the reason wasn't strong enough um, but the biggest thing came when um, I was, uh, I realized it was Christmas and um, the security officer who was really old, he, he was still working and he pretty much just said like, uh, come on, it's Christmas, don't do this. And yeah, um, I decided the, the reasons weren't strong enough and um, I just went, went along with it and came back. Um, but yeah, I was actually consider. I, I was actually considering like um, I, I was talking to the employees there, and I was considering getting a job, and just like leaving them behind forever. It was crazy stuff. Um, and I guess um, a lot of things went down. Another thing was uh, during my downtime uh, at the the um, house we stayed at. Um, I was on the internet and I watched a lot of stuff from the Dalai Lama. It was really uh, deep stuff, just like um, on his views on happiness and so forth. And that transcended to a lot of other videos related to the topic. And I, I really do think that um, uh, happiness can be uh, obtained without a lot of this stupid stuff and for the longest time for me at least um i always had this like gaping hole that I, I always felt like um i need girls in my life to achieve happiness i need to find a, a really hot girl and then i can achieve happiness and it was like a vague sort of purpose um i really wasn't sure exactly what i wanted like did you want a girlfriend? Did you want to hook up with the girl? Um, I think it was the latter, subconsciously. I don't know. Um, but honestly, would that really have done anything? Um, or was it really this this lifestyle that you saw these hot girls uh, live through college that you envied uh, with the partying and so forth? Or was it just this um, greater than that and this, this lifestyle of friends and... Uh, Greek life that you envied or, or, and so forth and it's I'm like looking back it's like why would you even bother doing all that stuff um, and quite honestly what I learned was through the Dalai Lama and so forth was just that like um, none of this stuff can really like if you're looking for money or or woman and so forth to achieve happiness um, that can sort of end with you realizing that it's not that important. And um, I actually, I've made a few videos on the topic and never really recorded them. No, I've recorded them, but I never uploaded them. Um, and it was mainly because um, I would say stuff like, yeah, you don't need all this stuff to be happy. But quite honestly, I was preaching to myself. I was trying to convince myself. And... Part of that's still kind of there, honestly. Um, 
but I think for others and for myself as well, um, if you really still can't put it through your mind that you don't need all this stuff to be happy, um, what I've been told and what I, I do think is true is that just try it out for yourself. Uh, try and obtain these things and see if you're happy. And for me, um, I guess in certain ways I've sort of kind of already done that. Like um, I've had girls numbers and uh, so forth. And for whatever reason or other, I, I chose not to follow up with the phone call. Um, and I would give myself these excuses like, oh, she wasn't attractive enough or, oh, I just didn't connect personality wise enough. And I wouldn't follow up past the number. Um, and I don't know. Um, I think, to be honest, I think some of it just has to be with me not finding, I mean, a girl that's, that I find uh, likes me back the same way. Like, I have been rejected by a few that I think would be awesome to hang out with so far, but um, I don't know. So the point is, like, if you really, if you really can't get your head around all this stuff, um, and you really do think that, oh, I need money, or I need the, these girls, or this lifestyle to achieve happiness, then maybe it's true. Um, if that's true, I wish all the best for you, and just go ahead and keep trying to achieve that. And that may be the only cure to figuring out that this, this stuff doesn't really make you happy. On the flip side of it, I probably do believe there are people out there, um, I think I've talked to a few who have achieved this stuff and really thought that it didn't make them happy so I don't even know uh, we're all in this journey together and uh, I guess for me I'm just going to keep trying and for the moment uh, when I'm in my hometown and I can't really do any of that um, just be content don't take things for granted I mean just be just being able to have four limbs a head and having food and not having illnesses, you're already beating a large percentage of the population um, and living in this grand state.